Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 44 of 2021, establishing Bahrain's Consulate General in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq of Amman. The two leaders exchanged good wishes, marking the holy month of Ramadan, wishing the two brotherly countries many happy returns of the occasion and the Arab and Islamic nations more progress. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi, where they exchanged good wishes on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. They wished the two countries many happy returns and the Arab and Islamic nations further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein of Jordan, where they exchanged good wishes on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. They wished the two countries many happy returns and wished the Arab and Islamic nations for their progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely. The cabinet extended their best wishes to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Bahraini citizens and the Arab and Islamic nations on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. The cabinet commended the support provided by His Majesty the King to Bahraini fishermen in line with the royal patronages and assistance provided to Bahraini citizens to solve their issues. The cabinet extended their gratitude to Bahraini citizens and residents who have registered for and received a COVID-19 vaccine, highlighting the importance of safeguarding the health of the community. The cabinet further emphasized the need to continue to follow all health precautionary measures against COVID-19 during the holy month of Ramadan. The Cabinet approved the following memorandums. A memorandum from the Civil Service Council regarding the establishment and organization of the General Sports Authority. The authority will regulate the sports sector and restructure the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs to increase efficiency within sports and youth affairs. A memorandum from the Civil Service Council on restructuring a number of government agencies with the aim of increasing efficiency and improving performance. Restructuring efforts to remove the position of Assistant Undersecretary, creating three departments, renaming eight others and transferring two departments. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on maintaining the current selling price of natural gas in line with the pieces of the global markets. The move will increase competitiveness and support the industrial sector in dealing with the challenges challenges presented by the global pandemic prices will be maintained for one year at the current price of $3.75 per million thermal units. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on the development of an electronic wallet for electronic payments of government services. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments on enabling the Ministry to benefit from the expertise of the offices and committees of the United Nations to prepare the executive regulations and regulatory decisions regarding the corrective justice law for children and their protection from all forms of abuse in accordance with the best practices in child protection rehabilitation. A memorandum presented by the Minister of Finance and National Economy on financing the second phase of municipal development projects with a budget estimated at 42 million Bahraini dinars from the revenues of the Municipal Share Resources Fund. The project focuses on, on establishing and maintaining a number of public facilities and internal roads in addition to urban development projects. And a memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's responses to 10 proposals, two law proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives and a law proposal submitted by the Shura Council. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the positive results achieved by Paris FC under the theme Victorious Bahrain in the French League after going through eight matches with zero defeat. He praised the role of the team and hailed its performance in the last match, with res which resulted in a tie. His Highness expressed his keenness to support the team in order to achieve the desired goals. 
An integrated water complex was opened in Al Jazair Beach, which was inaugurated by first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The opening ceremony was attended by Royal Life Saving Bahrain Chairperson Sheikh Najla bin Hamad bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, BOC Secretary General Mohammed Hassan Nusuf, and Idama CEO Amin Al Arayyad. Bahrain Swimming Association Chairman Mohammed Majbal and Bahrain Triathlon Federation Chief Abdullah Abdesalam also attended the opening ceremony. His Highness Sheikh Khalil cut ribbon signaling the opening of the project and to the milestone which includes an Olympic swimming pool, a semi-Olympic pool and other facilities. He was briefed about various facilities and services in the water complex in addition to the methods of building the project. He then attended a girls swimming race which was held at the semi-Olympic pool with the participation of eight swimmers followed by the boys race at the Olympic pool which featured eight participants marking the official launch of the two swimming pools. His Highness stressed the importance of this vital sports project, the first of its kind in Bahrain, in line with the vision of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to transform sports into a professional industry. He praised the water complex, which constitutes a qualitative leap in the kingdom, stressing its positive repercussions on swimming in particular and all water sports in general to enhance Bahrain's reputation on the regional and international levels. His Highness thanked Idama Company for providing the space for the project to be set up by the Olympic Committee, appreciating the cooperation of Idama Company and its active contribution to the completion of the project. Mumtalaka Chief Executive Officer Idama Chairman Khalid al Ramehi took pride in participating in the Water Complex project in cooperation with the Bahrain Olympic Committee. The UNESCO has announced the winners of the 12th edition of the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of ICT in education. The two laureates were the One College Student Per Village program at the Open University of China and the collaborative digital learning platform developed by the Center for Learning Analytics, University of Turku in Finland. The winners were chosen among many projects nominated by UNESCO member states and partner organizations based on the recommendation of an international jury comprising world education experts from various countries. On the occasion, Education Minister Dr. Majid Naimi highlighted the significance of the international award launched by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and adopted by the UNESCO. He added that the goals of the prestigious award are consistent with those of the UNESCO, focusing on expanding the use of ICT in education. He noted that the increasing number of participants annually proves the crucial importance of the award in serving humanity through education. Dr. Naimi said that the 2020 edition of the award focused on the role of artificial intelligence and ensuring a continuous access to quality education for all, especially amid the exceptional circumstances imposed by the coronavirus, leading to the adoption of remote learning and using modern technology. The Minister of Forks, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Islam Khalaf, affirmed that the Kingdom is working on designing and implementing a road network that would facilitate a safe traffic flow for all road users based on the 2030 vision through the development of a transportation network supported by an infrastructure that is based on the latest international standards. The Minister added that a number of initiatives are being implemented in the road network sector to support the strategic plan aimed at developing the Kingdom's road networks and allowing future development projects as well as reducing traffic congestion, in addition to increasing safety for all road users.
Shura Council Member and Chairwoman of Women and Child Affairs Committee Dr. Abtisam Dalal took part in an inter-parliamentary union meeting in regards to the COVID-19 economic impact on women and gender equality. To speak more about this, we are joined by Shura Council Member Dr. Abtisam Dalal. Hello Dr. Abtisam, tell us about your participation in the meeting in terms of economic recovery post-COVID-19. Uh, hello, thank you very much for the invitation to highlight and showcase the economic uh, situation uh, for women in general and the Bahraini women in particular. In fact, the International European Parliament meetings started last week in which we discussed uh, praise rising the women economic empowerment as the impact of a crisis are never gender uh, neutral. And the COVID-19 crisis, of course, is no exception. Uh, women worldwide are particularly vulnerable to layoffs and loss of livelihoods. And it's been estimated that during the first month of the pandemic, uh, informal workers lost an average of 60% of their income. And women on the front lines, and this is very important, are more affected by COVID-19 all over the world. And too many women are sacrificing their health for economic security, as you know. And uh, the impact of COVID-19 are uh, and will continue to be uh, really felt most harshly by women in many countries who are really living in a very difficult and disadvantaged circumstances. And according to a new analysis commissioned by UN Women and UNDP by 2021, around four 435 million women and girls will be living, imagine, on less than $2 per day, including 47 million pushed into poverty as a result of COVID-19. So therefore, really closing the gender uh, poverty gap must be a vital part of a broader poverty eradication strategy. And in fact, applying a gender lens in designing packages and social assistance programs is a crucial for building a more uh, prosperous, equal, inclusive, and resilient society. In Bahrain, it's a completely different situation. As the COVID-19 crisis could substantially widen the gap globally, but Bahrain is really fighting to uphold women in the community. Dr. We Dana. are... Yes. Um, I'm sorry, how do you value Bahrain's efforts in dealing with the matter and what is more that should be done from your point of view? Yes, uh, let me, let me uh, showcase what's been done by the uh, Supreme Council and the by task, National Task Force. And that was really uh, beyond our expectation. Uh, in Bahrain, we are extending a gender balance approach uh, to mitigate, of course, the impact of COVID-19, ensuring that women don't become economic victims of the pandemic. Such approach reflects the commitment of the kingdom to uphold the progress already achieved by Bahraini women, both socially and economically. The Supreme Council, what's been done here in Bahrain, the Supreme Council for Women has put in place three policies to mitigate the pandemic impact on women. Policy number one is to support the female workforce in and from home. Realizing the importance of the female presence at the front line, the Bahraini government adapted a recommendation issued by the Supreme Council for Women to grant the spouses for women or women assuming vital front line duties the opportunity to work from home. Additionally, from the earliest stages of the pandemic outbreak, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa directed authorities to enable mothers in the public sector to work also from home. The second policy uh, adapted was to encourage uh, psychological uh, counseling virtually, and that was implemented through a campaign launched by the Supreme Council for Women early, it was in early March 2020, and was entitled Together for the Safety of Bahrain. This is a program called Your Remote Advisor, and was introduced to ensure the, the continuous provision of the council, psychological, family, legal, and economic consultations. And to date, 
the program has provided over 8,000 consultations with a comparatively relaxed lockdown and the, with the institutions such as Supreme Council for Women and Civil Society Organization. Setting this counseling for women really uh, to, to, to uh, uh, become the fight uh, in domestic abuse and conflict against women in Bahrain was very much lower if you compare it with the reported uh, with the reports elsewhere in the uh, all over the world. Then the council the member and chairwoman of Women and Child Affairs Committee, Dr. Tisam Dallal, thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 565,171 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 391,300 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 10,984, with 1,028 recoveries, 1,060 registered new cases and four deaths. 354 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 662 are contacts of active cases, and 44 are travel-related. The deceased were two female citizens, aged 67 and 35, and two male citizens, aged 67 and 106. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.